Hello, welcome to another edition of the City News Show. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. In today's edition, I'm coming to you from one of the auction places where cars of some of the defunct microfinance companies as well as savings and loans companies are being kept to be auctioned to pay up customers whose monies have been stuck in some of these institutions. Now, if you remember the receiver earlier, this year announced that it intends to auction these cars to pay off some of these monies. In a bit, we'll be speaking to the receiver as well as some customers who have bought these auction cars or these cars that are to be auctioned. But I'm going to take you now to the yard to see what cars are there and what is really happening over here. Come with me. So right behind me are a number of cars, all types of cars, from pickups to saloon cars, as well as um, four-wheel cars and all that. The Yaris's, the Corollas, uh, the Renault Dusters, the um, Rios, um, the Range Rovers, the Hondas, the Kias, um, and quite an interesting array of cars we have um, here. We have Micras as well. We have Picantos and um, all that here. What we've noticed are quite a number of branded cars of microfinance companies. Those ones that we're seeing here include Multibility Microfinance, DPF Microfinance, Nationwide Microfinance as well. They have some of their cars here. Home Support Allied Microfinance. Um, we also have Expressway Microfinance. One of the microfinance companies that has quite a number of cars here is Melbourne Microfinance and then Expressway Microfinance Company. We also have Blue Hills and Wintrust as well as Goldman Capital and then AN Microfinance. So those that are branded here, um, these are some of the companies that we see on these vehicles, branded on these vehicles. The others are not really branded cars. Some you can tell were not the day-to-day -day company cars being used, as in cars being used by the marketing team and all that. You can see that the tiny ones, which there are quite a number of them, pretty tiny ones and saloon cars, which uh, probably belong to the marketing and sales teams of these companies. There are quite a, a lot of them. We're told by the receiver that the cars are from the companies that have gone under. Another interesting one we're seeing is a taxi. Maybe the taxi belonged to one of the institutions. So let's see, saloon cars and all that. Let's see how many cars we have over here. So. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Counting the cars, there are about seventy-three cars here uh, packed at this yard. All these cars belong to microfinance companies and all these cars have been auctioned in, um, for that matter this week to be able to pay customers whose monies are stuck in these microfinance companies. So this is it from the yard that is holding the cars for microfinance companies and that have been auctioned by the receiver to defray the debt. We'll move to the auction yard which houses the savings and loans companies and then we'll, we'll take it from there. So we've come to the second yard where the auction cars are parked. This yard is much bigger than the first one. If you look at it, it's about a four plot. We can see there are about 120 or more cars parked here. Now, this yard is housing cars from savings and loans companies. So if you look at the, the brands of the cars or the make of the cars, they are a bit on the high side and quite a number of them 
are more in the high size. On the other side, where we saw more of the smaller cars and just about uh, three or four luxury cars in there. But here, the situation is a bit different. So I'm going to run you through the various cars here and the um, companies whose cars are here. And then later, tell you about some other cars that aren't here but may not be sold um, pretty soon because of some litigation with the case. So we are told that with this yard, the place is um, divided into two sections, section A and section B. Section A, which is where I'm standing um, behind me, is where these cars here have been um, auctioned or have been put under the hammer to be auctioned. And then on my far right side, we have the car are under litigation or there's a bit of litigation around those cars so they're not going to be sold but let me run you through some of the companies that we're seeing their cars parked there so we have the likes of IFS um, we also have legacy capital we have um, global access um, First Trust, uh, we have the Women's World Bank in this pickup for example belongs to the Women's World Bank um, banking company then we also have the all-time finance company as well as Adom savings and loans company so all these cars here belong to savings and loans companies and management of savings and loans companies so that's what we see here now there are quite a number of brands here the car brands range from Nissan pickups, Ford Explorers, Hyundai Accent, Hyundai Santa Fe. We have the Suzuki, Baleno. We have an Escalade here, a Kia Sorento. There's some Toyota Hilux, Toyota Coaster here, Hyundai Elantra, among others. So these are the type of cars here. And then some number of bullion vans over here as well, um, parked in this yard. I'm going to take you to the section B, where we're told uh, those cars um, are not being sold because there's a bit of a litigation around that. So if you look at this side, uh, um, we have a number of cars from Ford to Toyota Prados, uh, Nissans and all that. We're told all these cars belong to the GN Bank, but because of this litigation, they cannot be sold. So they have been put in the group B. So that's the situation here. So we're told the next process for those who bought cars here is uh, um, they can bring their mechanics and all that to check the cars and then move them away and take them. Because we're told that um, you pay 10% after you win the bid and then you pay up everything by four o'clock of the day that you go and buy that vehicle but let's get more details of that so let me go to the receiver proper the spokesperson for the receiver and she was going to give us more details about the process so far and the way forward on the auctioning I think the process has been good we've had high patronage we have a lot of people trooping in to bid for these vehicles. I think so far, so good. Well, initially there were some challenges. Uh, people they didn't understand that they had to go and check what they wanted to buy before they come here and issues to do with payments and all that. How did you resolve those challenges? Okay, I think most people just saw the adverts and auction and that was all. We opened a three-day window for people to go and view their cars before we started selling them. So for those who came here without viewing the car, they bid and then they go to the site to view the car and they come back at pay. Initially when we started, we gave them two hours. When you bid for a car and you are the highest bidder, you need two hours to make full payments. But then we realize that by the time they go all the way to wager where the cars are and come back, the two hour has elapsed. So we increase it to four hours. And later on, it, it was morning and then you are able to pay by close of the day. So let's walk through the auction process. We've seen a, a bit of it, but for uh, viewers, let's walk them through the auction. What is the first starting point and how does the process end? Okay. 
for every auction, you know that you have to do three adverts, three consecutive adverts in the media. So we started by placing adverts in the dailies, the Ghanaian Times and the Daily Graphic. And we did some with the radio stations as well. So after that, we got them all here on Monday, those who were interested. So they came and then we took them through the process, which is the highest bidder is the purchaser. And then at the sound of the gavel, it means we are done with you. And we sold as it were. So if you go and the car is what it is, that is what you take. So those were the rules. Right, right. So after the highest bidder wins the bid, what do you do? When you win the bid, you come for a way bill, which they write with your name, your ID, and everything. And then they give you the price. Then you go to the bank. In fact, we set up a small bank here. So you go to the bank and make payments. Um, along the line, people didn't carry that huge monies with them. So we decided to put 10% down. So if 10% is a 1,000 cities, you put down a 1,000 cities, and then you go to the bank and bring the remaining. Have you had issues where people pull down the 10% were not able to pay after the first uh, issue with the timing, after you sorted that out? Did you have people who pulled down some 10% but never came back? or No, okay. they came back. All right. So let's look at uh, what you've done so far. How many um, cars uh, or if there are other things you sold, have you, did you bring to sell for this um, program? We brought 161 vehicles. We have sold, they've paid for 115 assets now. But I understand we have about eight left, which means the others they haven't paid yet. But for 115, full payment, and then uh, we have about 10 or 12 cars left, which we are waiting for the others to come and pay. So, in all, I'm sure you have a figure, you valued everything. What money were you expecting and how much have you made? For this first batch, we're expecting about 3.8 million Ghana cities. But as at yesterday, we had uh, a little over 2.6 million Ghana cities. Okay. Um, so, you're done with the cast for now. If the rest, the eight, are not picked, do you move it to a next auction or what happened? Yes, if the eight are not picked, maybe it's due to the pricing. So we get the valuers to revalue it and then we add it to the next batch that we'll be selling. Okay. And then let's look at the distribution of the, this, this money. What happens to the money now after you've gotten it? You know, one of the core mandates of the receiver is to retrieve assets, sell, and make money for payments. And those depositors we are talking about forms the body of creditors that must be paid. So it will be distributed according to Act 930. So you're done with the cars. What's another auction coming and what kind of assets are we seeing? Uh, we've done with the cars. There's another one that will deal with another batch of cars. Then after that, I know we are gathering the landed assets, the houses, etc. And that one too will come up for sale when we are done.